People often ask me, what was my inspiration for electronics? Look, I was interested in everything. I'm a very practical person. So in those days, I remember I was a magician. I used to go to parties as a magician. I built model aeroplanes. I've always been interested in electronics, I think because you can't see what's really going on, but there's something magical going on. I don't know, there's something about electronics that was fun. Plus, you know, I, you know, I, was, I sort of grew up, grew up in the 70s and 80s, so electronics was a little cooler than it was now. Now everyone's got computers. The word electronics didn't seem to appear until the 20s. Electronics, uh, when I was growing up, was, uh, was fascinating for me, every, uh, every aspect of it. In fact, the, the magazine called Electronics is actually one of the first usages of the, of the name. Otherwise, most would just called radio. Electronics was radio, but later on, electronics expanded a great deal. The, the people who were interested in electronics were basically just bright people who wanted to learn things. Look, I think it was a curiosity. How did it work? What made it tick? I was sent to a vocational guidance person and they said uh, I could either do medicine or electronic engineering. I started in electronics um, probably because my father gave me a transistor radio when I was about 14. Dad buys me a soldering iron for my birthday and I just literally desolder everything I get my hands on. Radios, televisions, I mean anyone who had anything that was electronic. I guess I started off in electronics as a very, very, very young lad, probably uh, pre-school. I was interested in electricity. I just was curious and uh, I think that curiosity led me into thinking about biology and electronics. Dad was an engineer, though he was not working as an engineer when uh, I was young. He sort of helped me with electrical matters. The two seemed to fuse together in a natural way. My interest in electronics started when I was about 12 years of age. I had very little interest in electronics in my childhood. When I was at school there were other students who were interested in amateur radio and building their own radios. I had no interest in it whatsoever. I was involved with, uh, for many years with um, a band called Seven Heads, which is an electronic dance band, electronic music band. Got involved in uh, video making in about mid-70s. That led me to electronics. I'd always been into electronics. In fact, I built a valve circuit device when I was age 12 and built an electroencephalograph out of army dispersals parts when I was 16. I was always a tinkerer, I guess. Um, put, you know, pulling apart bikes, pulling apart radios, that kind of thing. I started basically when I was about eight. I was um, fascinated always with um, electricity and how it worked and, and what it could do. I guess with electronics you saw either something made a sound or it moved or it made, it made a light in, in some pretty fashion. Yeah, you got hooked on it. How you could light up a light bulb, you know, how you could make an electromagnet. It just seemed to come naturally. I just liked the things electrical. One thing led to another. I got my amateur licence at the age of 16. When I was a kid, I was probably six or seven and I kept taking everything apart. I was just, I was a typical uh, kid of the day. If you were in inquisitive about how anything worked, you took apart stuff and there were no no computers back then to distract you from that sort of thing so you took apart electronics. Sometimes putting them back together and um, sometimes designing my own things. I'm interested in astronomy and there's a lot of electronics in astronomy. It attracted all different walks of life but very very intelligent young un, uncomplicated brains. When I was a young medical student I had in those days it was allowed a brain in the laundry at home, which I used to look carefully and study. I think mostly what drove me was curiosity. And a lot of it was self-taught, a lot of it my father taught me, uh, being his interest it was passed on to me. I was really introduced to it by a family friend when I was about seven years old and um, he used to modify electronics, he was a technician and uh, I used to look over his shoulder and see what he was doing and I just thought it was fascinating. My parents had a news agency and I was able to uh, look at all of the books and things that, uh, that came into the newspaper shop. I loved radio and I fiddled with radio. I bought home an old radio and I got it working. My parents bought me one of those 50 in 1 electronics project kits and oh, that was just that was just my entire world. Initially you're just trying to pull things apart and understand how things are going but then the creative side kicks in it's like well now I want to make something. The first thing I did was uh, I got a battery and a switch and a, and a globe and made light and that was a thrill. People just wanted to learn uh, to put a few things together and it did something. It turned the lead on and, and made a noise. Picking up a soldering iron, well it doesn't take very long to, to learn how to solder. I just soaked it all up like a sponge. But I can remember mucking about with 
crystal set and radio bits and pieces at the age of eight. I was building a, a crystal set. My first project was a crystal set. Connecting the crystal set together and connecting it to, a, to an antenna through a little crystal earpiece was what I call, or what people would call, an epiphany. It was extraordinary. It was extraordinary to be able to listen on a radio one had built oneself and hear uh, shortwave transmissions from around the world. And you could build your own, so there was shops that sold parts. Well, in those days you could make a little radio by buying a, a wooden board which was used for a switch plate and a tag strip and you'd solder the bits together with it. It was, it was such an excitement that this was available. I didn't actually have to build it, I bought it already built but it had a whole lot of failings and I eventually fiddled around and got it going a lot better. We start off with a roll which was a cardboard roll, not much bigger than a toilet roll. You couldn't electrocute yourself. You know nothing's going to blow up in a crystal set, it's not even, it doesn't even have a battery. Wound several hundred turns on that and uh, with little loops in different places for tuning, that was our coil. From the early 20s you could go into shops in Sydney and Melbourne and buy components or email, you know, mail, no email, mail order them. We got a uh, so-called cat's whisker diode and an earphone and uh, connected those up on a small capacitor which would have been uh, pirated from a radio set. And I had the crystal set on the, the window ledge and I had a crystal earpiece in it and I was tinkling around with a, a, another crystal earpiece somewhere near the front of the circuit. And all of a sudden, I heard my own voice. To hear a jumble of radio stations come out of what looks like just a, a, a few wires twisted together, I found that astonishing. To hear somebody talking in what appeared to be Russian or the voice of America uh, and so on. How can that be? I could hear my own voice. I thought, I have to know more about this. My building that first crystal set when I was about eight and hearing the bagpipes was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I'd built it myself and it was like magic. What I'd produce was a tiny amplifier. And of course, that changed my whole life because before I was just listening to radio stations. And once I got this little amplifier working, it changed my whole idea of electronics that I could build something with, which wasn't just a, a crystal set. And that's what got me right there. Electronics is very much cut and dried. It turns on and off and the light flashes and you know you've got a reliable product. You're sort of exploring how this stuff is and you know, and you just rip into it. There were a number of kids who were pretty bright and uh, they, uh, we learnt from each other. I pretty much uh, taught myself electronics. That's the whole point, you teach yourself. That's all I mucked around with, that was my hobby, electronics. Nobody taught me anything, there was no books around. I had a book on crystal sets and things like that, but you just learn yourself. Anybody who was interested in uh, electronics or electricity was a nerd or a geek. There was no electronics courses that were up to date. We just kept trying things until, until it worked. And that's the, the way we learnt in those days, we just didn't have the the enormous amount of capability, enormous amount of, of, of uh, products available to help us. We had a bit of a radio club at high school. I wasn't interested in football, I wasn't interested in the, the local country town things. So I thought, oh well look, I, I better do something I am interested in, I'll go back and I'll do the electronics. My interest in electronics has not diminished. That interest just stayed with me for life. The sense of, of being in electronics was it was a giant Meccano set. It was only limited to your imagination as what you could do with it. I think in some ways what the most profound change that happened in my life was that, you know, the computers being put in schools in that early stage, in those early programs. Somewhere there's a bureaucrat somewhere who decided to do this, and he's, you know, probably retired now because, you know, we're talking decades ago, but it's had, I think, a profound effect on a lot of people of my age group because their first exposure to computers were in schools. Mm -hmm.